the highs and lows. Kimberley, between 2 and 17 degrees today. Sam, you're in Kimberley. It's a little bit chilly, I'd say, but I know the weather has got a strong bearing to the environment, which is what you're t talking about today. Bring us in on uh, the details. Good morning, Yanda. Yeah, definitely. And that's what we're going to be unpacking here from Kimberley this morning. Now, for many, the South African Weather Service have been keeping abreast of climate patterns for the benefit of the country, but they provide so much more than just that service. It's part of their mandate to save the planet. Now, joining me right now is forecaster Pamela Mulabi. Uh, she's a forecaster with the South African Weather Service. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's, let's talk about this role that South African Weather Service is playing. We only think of it as uh, weather prediction. We only think of climate, but there's just so much more you guys are doing, Pamelo. Yes, definitely. One of our mandates is uh, to protect life as well. Uh, so we do have an early warning system uh, that uh, when there is something imminent, then we do disseminate uh, SMSs to local disaster management, and then they then uh, forward them to the relevant uh, uh, entities. When Ayanda was crossing to us, she was talking about the impact of the uh, weather on our environment. But a lot of us, especially the laymen, we don't really understand that connection. Can you uh, explain that for me a little bit more? In terms of uh, whether the impact on the environment, um, we could say uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a long story, but uh, in short, we just look at uh, in terms of the severity of it. Um, uh, we usually look at uh, the road shows, uh, for instance, what we're having here, um, looking at making people aware at the type of uh, severe weather that we can have, and also looking at uh, its weather awareness more than anything. What do you do in terms of when there's a severe thunderstorm, when there is flood? what do you get um, uh, to help you and also the measures that you can take, the precautions. This year's theme, seven billion dreams, uh, one planet, uh, consumer care. How do you at the South African Weather Service interpret that theme? In terms of us is uh, playing our role um, in uh, doing our best actually to save the environment. Um, one of the things that we've tried is to use less paper in the office instead of uh, printing everything. You can do it electronically, why not? I mean, it's a small step, but it is something to help. Now, uh, to the right of me, there is a big red balloon. Explain to me what the significance of the balloon is and what role does it play in weather detections or climate patterns? This is actually one of the most important features that we have at the South African Weather Service. We actually call it an upper air sounding. So what we do every day um, at uh, 12 o'clock local time, we release balloons from our various stations in the country. And what it does when it goes up, it's going to record uh, temperature for us, wind speed and direction, humidity, um, looking at the pressure as it goes up. Um, and all of that data gets ingested in a global model. And then it helps us uh, with the forecast for the next day. And also it gives us a state of the atmosphere, whether it's going to be uh, unstable or is it stable. Are we expecting thunderstorms? Will they be severe? So it's very good for, for forecasting. Just how far? I've seen these balloons being released, but I've, it's, I've always wondered just how far do they travel or how far up do they go? They can go up to about even uh, 12 uh, kilometers up into the atmosphere if there isn't an early burst. So the idea is to get it as high as possible so we can get a nicer profile of the atmosphere as it goes up. But, I mean, you're going to see once it goes up, there's going to be a point where we won't even see it, hopefully, if it uh, goes up correctly today. What's the, yeah. the, the technology at the end of the balloon? Because I see the actual balloon, but there's a, a box tied to it. Just for our viewers, what, what do you carry in that box? Okay, so what we call at the end of the that little box is our radio sound. So in it, we've got the temperature sensors and also the the ones that will be recording the wind speed and direction. And in other ones, it will actually also record the relative humidity as it goes up in the atmosphere. So it's nice to see where it's moist, where there is a dry spell. Then it gives us an idea as well. We use it for our aviation clients to have an idea of if there is cloud that develops, at what levels will it be? Very important to know that. Okay, so they're going to release the balloon now. Okay. Let's quickly talk about this experiment because it's going up in the air, but I feel a bit like a kid <laughs> and I've seen all the tools on the table. What are you going to be showing some of the kids today? You can release the balloon. 
Okay, so today uh, we're going to um, have a look at that. Uh, the balloon has now gone off. So as it's going up now, it's, uh, it would be recording your temperature, wind speed and everything. But we usually have a satellite uh, communication that's connected to it. Then it comes up as a graph. Then we have a, actually a, a graphical image of what's happening in the atmosphere. So inside there we're going to be uh, giving an idea of a simulation of a tornado, of what it would look like in reality. So that will be very nice. Just a little experiment that we have and also an automatic weather station that we use around the country. Bumela Moabi, thank you very much for joining us from the South African Weather Service. They're going to simulate a tornado. It's cool, isn't it? Anyway, we go back to the studio.